Well, good morning, friends at Westview Baptist Church. Today is Wednesday, May the 20th, and uh, I'm recording this from my uh, home, my condo down in Baltimore, and uh, I would have been with you this past Sunday, the 17th, during the morning service to talk a little bit about a workshop that we have scheduled, and uh, currently it's scheduled for May 30th, but as I spoke with Pastor Brian over these last weeks and so, for obvious reasons, we won't be uh, coming up for the workshop, but we are going to reschedule um, for some time during the summer or as soon as we can uh, safely come up and, and uh, meet with you. But I wanted to give you a bit of an overview of what uh, the workshop entails. I know that, uh, that Pastor Brian put a, a small write-up in the church bulletin and has been mentioning some things here and there. And, Certainly, Staros Ministries has a bit of a history at Westview Baptist over the number of years with Mike Kisner out in, in uh, West Virginia for the years that he was uh, living there. Now he's in, in Georgia, and Micah Suits down in Inwood was with us for a number of years. But um, So there's a bit of a history there, and, and some of you have a, a, a fairly good knowledge of our ministry work. Uh, what we are is a ministry that meets primarily one-to-one with individuals dealing with various forms of addictions, and that's that's a very um, that's a true statement, a very uh, a short, concise statement. Um, but when we over the years in ministry, I'm I'm in my 18th year of full time work down here in the Baltimore area primarily. I um, over these years we have um, uh, seen a lot of um, uh, other necessities when you deal with somebody dealing with an addiction. And, and um, our literature would say on there that we help individuals in addictions, as I mentioned, but also offer support to their families. And um, so one of the things that uh, we've done over the years was, again, meet with families. I probably spend almost half of my time, if not half of my time, meeting with family members of someone addicted uh, for various reasons. Oftentimes they're not ready for help. They're not interested in help. I'm not maybe the one to help them. I'm willing, but we don't certainly click with everyone. Um, but oftentimes the families are the ones who are trying to work out life and trying to manage life and trying to do the things they do. But then also it, within churches and within family units, there's individuals who want to better help the individual struggling with an addiction and so we put together a workshop over these last number of years and are continuing to refine it as we learn things and will continue to refine it as we learn things. But right now, um, we have it in a uh, form. I have a booklet here. You, you really can't see the details, but I just wanted to show it to you. It's called Caring for the Addicted Through Discipleship. And what it is, it's actually just seven pages in here. Um, of companion sheets to go along with a workshop that we will present when we come up to you. What I'm going to do over the next few weeks is record a series of um, videos just like this going through each of the four objectives of the workshop. And so today really is just an overview of the workshop itself to give you an idea of what we'll be doing. And then again, when um, opportunity permits, we'll come up schedule a Saturday to come up, reschedule a Saturday to come up, and we will um, uh, go ahead and, and work through the workshop itself. So in the, in the booklet itself, in the, in the back flap, there are two sheets that we, we would give out. And um, one of them is a pre and post assessment. And I'll reveal the four objectives today and, and talk about this assessment and then We'll go through the four objectives over a series of videos over the next several weeks. Um, but the four objectives are this, uh, defining addiction as a spiritual issue, understanding more of the depth of it isn't simply just a matter of somebody taking drugs and then becoming addicted, although that's often how it occurs. Um, but when we start to look into it, we realize there's something deeper there than just somebody becoming dependent upon a substance. Um, but bad enough as that is, it certainly has its own um, uh, need for addressing uh, without question. But we wanna often realize that there's probably something deeper going on there. The second objective is defining the need for care and discipleship. And again, as we get into that, we'll see a little more of why that question is there. 
but um, it just in, in brief, understanding that it is more than just telling somebody they're doing something wrong, uh, proving to them from the Bible that it's wrong if we choose to go that way, um, just telling them they need to stop, just telling them that um, they need to go somewhere to get help or whatever it might be. All of those things may have truth and validity to them, uh, but we want to be able to say, well, there is a need for us to give of ourselves a bit more, and, and certainly we'll bring in the biblical um, uh, foundation for that as we go through the, these particular objective objectives in the videos. The third objective is defining Jesus' model of care and discipleship. Looking at some of the ways that he ministered to folks, he didn't simply preach the gospel, preach about salvation, as it were. Um, there were times, and again, we'll get into that, there were times when he would have stood in the way of accusers to one who was struggling and hurting. Uh, there were times when he would have been very frank. You must be born again to inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you would know some of these things already. There were times when he uh, went aside with a young man to help him, pulled him away from the crowd. So we want to illustrate and give a bit of um, a picture to these particular ways that we can offer ministry, offer help to people who are looking for help and need help. Um, it isn't, again, it isn't simply, and I don't mean that in the simplest form, but I mean it isn't just telling them this is wrong, you need to change, here's some things you need to do or can do, here's what the Bible says and all that, but we want to be able to, to care for them and, and offer discipleship as people are interested. The fourth objective that we cover is defining the Christian's role of being the carer slash discipler. Um, in, in short, we could say it's, it's kind of a illustration of the do's and don'ts, what to watch for, what to look for. Um, we would incorporate some role play exercises when we would come face to face, and we may do that by video if we are able to do some role play to give some examples of what that looks like. Um, not letting someone pull you into their behavior. We certainly look at uh, Paul, um, his letters to the churches, and, and uh, we've shared messages. I've heard, I'm sure you've all heard a message at some point in time about watching yourself lest you may be tempted. You know, we already carry others' burdens, but we need to be careful not to get dragged in. We need to be careful not to let someone um, present ultimatums to us, those kinds of things. We cover that. It's more of a practical approach. So again, we're trying to understand the spiritual nature of an addiction, the depth of it. We're trying to look at the need to enter in a bit more than just to give advice, although there are times when that's all maybe we can do and should do. We're looking at the way that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, did that very thing with different folks. And then we're looking at some of the practicalities, I would call it the nuts and bolts of what this entails. Now, in this sheet that I were, was looking at, we asked the questions pre, we, we passed this out prior to going through the workshop. And we asked you, do you understand, do you consider addiction beyond just the practicality? Do you see it as a spiritual issue? Do you have a bit of a sense of the church's role and your role as an individual in helping people? Do you understand a bit of the breadth of how Jesus ministered to people? It wasn't just one way to all peoples. And then do you think you're equipped to offer help to someone who is struggling? And oftentimes it may be within your own family, but certainly within your church at, at Westview Baptist, uh, our desire would be that folks within there would become better equipped at helping the people around them now, families at, at the church that you may know of, families that you might not know of exactly, but catch on that they're struggling some, this may open up a doorway for some of that to come about, some, some things to be made known in the ways that are appropriate. But then as, as your ministry grows, there no, undoubtedly are going to be men and women coming into your church um, who are dealing with various forms of addictions themselves or within their families, and we just want to help you be better equipped to do that very thing. So we pass this out, and then after the workshop, um, what we do is we, we ask Prior, do you, do you have a sense of these objectives? Do you understand them well? Then afterwards, and then at the bottom, these would be passed in. We have a section there asking, what did you think was helpful? What would you like to see covered more? 
uh, what did you find maybe wasn't answering some questions you had and you could write exact questions. We would then have this left on the table uh, at the end of the workshop. You wouldn't have to put a name, you wouldn't put a name on there, they're just anonymous. Um, but we want to find out if what we, has, what we have covered has conveyed what we're trying to convey and that is to better equip you to understand some things you might not have prior to the workshop. The second sheet we have in the booklet is a, a, an assessment checklist and there are some very basic questions that you might ask someone. You might ask them verbatim as these are or you might take them and modify them, modify them a little bit certainly to the situation, the individual. How long has fill in the blank been a dominating issue? I often meet with people who tell me that they haven't been drinking or taking drugs for very long and then as we start to talk, I find out that it's a little further back than they initially said, maybe not intentionally hiding it, but just it goes that way. But also, we can find out a little bit about this first objective. We can find that it's a little more maybe of a spiritual issue. Um, when we get into the, work, the actual objective, I'll share a little bit about my own life and how the addiction I was embroiled in didn't just start as I'm going to take drugs and then became addicted. There was a spiritual issue going on that I was not uh, addressing, I was not looking at, and that's what led to that. So, so how long has it been an issue? It helps people to see a little more of the depth of things. When did you first notice a problem? That helps us to know, was it, was it a marriage that go, went awry and the wife or the husband said to them, you have a problem? You know, they, they might have already known it, it might have been apparent, but when did they first notice it? Have others told you they see a problem? How has this affected your relationships? What have you already done to address these issues? We want to get a bit of an understanding of what's already been done so we're not redoing things. What have you found to be helpful? And that, that would sort of connect itself to the pre and post assessment for the, the uh, person involved in the workshop. Um, what have you found to be helpful thus far? What have you already done? What have you learned that you might be able to do? Did you see God as helpful? That's an opening to share the gospel possibly with someone. And then if you have found God helpful, how would you characterize your relationship with him? So again, just a, a brief assessment that would help to find out where somebody is in life, in relationship, and with God. And then the workshop itself, the booklet here, would, would have pages that have some, some spaces on the side for notes. And uh, they would just be, again, talking points to go along with the four objectives of the workshop. So I wanted to, to make this video today and I'm going to send it out to you. Uh, it will be on our YouTube channel. You can find other information about STARS through there a bit. Most of it are messages I've been sharing during this uh, worship at home time for a church where I'm filling in currently at the time, but also some videos. If you scroll down on the YouTube page a ways, you'll find some videos of our group STARS Alive playing music, playing songs of worship, and uh, we enjoy that. Actually, our first organized concert was at Westview Baptist Church back in 2012. We came as a large group and we had a, a concert that many of you probably listening to this, viewing this video would have attended. So, so we appreciate that. That was kind of the start of our, of our organized concerts, if you will, as a large grouping. And we've had various players come and go over the years for different reasons, but we still play quite a bit and sing and we do enjoy that very much. So I hope this was helpful to you. Again, um, I'll be sending out a video uh, maybe once per week, maybe twice a week, I'm not sure yet, but it'll be covering the objectives specifically in the workshop. I would hope that, that wasn't, this wouldn't cause you not to attend the workshop. I'm hoping that it'll, it'll actually invigorate you, excite you, that when we can get together, you'll be um, interested in, in watching and inter interested in coming to the workshop itself and joining in with the discussion and hearing the various parts that we want to share with you. Would you pray with me as we pray about our help as, as a ministry, as individuals, our help as West, Westview Baptist Church, reaching out to others who are struggling and hurting, that we might be able to learn more of sharing the glory of God with those who need to hear about it. Father, we thank you today we can be reminded that uh, your love for us never fails and your love for us is consistent, is timely, and covers all things. And we pray as a people for those watching this video, for those listening, that we might 
be used by you and we might learn from you and learn from others how we can better minister to the people around us who are in need, who are hurting, and who need the gospel message. But Father, we pray you would help us to see the larger picture of what people are asking, what they're looking for, not just be too focused on the exact thing going on. But Father, we need your help with that. We need your help for that. Well, we ask these things, Lord, today with an expectancy and a hope in and through and because of your Savior, the Savior, Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen.